Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I uploaded a video because, quite frankly, I've been really busy and I wasn't very happy with the setup that I had for my little studio that I've got going on here. So I've changed a couple things around and hopefully this setup will make you happy and it'll make me happy and everybody's going to be a very happy person in general. Isn't that great? So today I would like to dig right back into Swift content, which is, of course, why you're watching this channel in the first place. So if you're not yet subscribed or if you want to learn more about Swift, make sure to subscribe to this channel because I will be uploading more and more and more and build a whole catalog of cool Swift videos with all kinds of, well, UI stuff, but also really heavy theoretical things. Anyway, today I would like to talk about SF symbols a little bit. SF symbols have been around in iOS for a little while now, and initially they were a collection of very cool symbols that we could use in our apps. And it really made it possible for you to have icons in your app that really look and feel like they belong in iOS. So that's very cool. And over the years, Apple has been adding more symbols, but also they have been adding features to these symbols, like the ability to animate them, to color them, and to do other uh, kind of transition-y things with them. So in this video, I would like to take a look at the animation options that we have available with SF symbols, all the way from the beginning to what's new in iOS 18. So we're going to start with some simple things and we'll work towards more complicated transition stuff later on. Let's dig right into a demo uh, so you can see some code and I can explain what the code does. So what I've set up right here is a very simple struct. And this struct basically gives me a little wrapper to have a consistent look and feel for all of my SF symbols that I want to show you today. Uh, so really don't think too much of this. This is just a little template that I'm using. It doesn't do anything special. Right. I still wanted to show it to you because if I don't show it, you'll have no idea what the magic of the icon sample view is. So we're going to start off with a very basic animation. And our very basic animation allows us to take uh, an icon, right? So any kind of icon. In this case, I chose to have the AirPods Pro charging case because um, it, it looks fun when you animate that. And I've already applied a wiggle effect to it. So we can say image assistant name to get our uh, SF symbol like this. And then we can say apply a symbol effect of wiggle. And we can pass options. And these options allow me to say how we should animate. So I could also just pass no options. And what you'll see is that we get a temporary animation if we go ahead and rerun this preview. So it still runs forever. We can also make another animation. So we could say non-repeating. That will make it animate exactly once. All right, so that'll do jiggle, jiggle, done. Uh, but we like repeating. Uh, and then we could also have a number of uh, repetitions. So we could say continuous, which is what we were using before. Right, so that gives us a forever repeating animation, which is quite cool. We can also give other kinds of animations here. We could, for example, instead of make this wiggle, provide a cumulative animation. So that allows me to say dot variable color, right? So that takes the variable color property of uh, the SF symbols. You can already see by animating the variable color, I am now creating this animation. I'll zoom in a little bit uh, where my SF symbol is now sort of progressively filling up. And I can control what happens here. It currently is doing the cumulative animation. That means that it adds color to layers one by one, and in the end, all the layers are filled. I can also say dot dim inactive layers. So that will uh, get pretty much the same effect in this case. Let's see what other options we have. We have uh, iterative. Right? So now it'll just highlight a single layer. So it, it highlights the inner radio wave and then the outer radio wave and then goes back and it keeps doing that. And we can also change the repeat behavior for this one. So that's pretty cool, right? This could be a very good uh, animation that you might want to use for connectivity problems or for showing that you're connecting to something. Um, this is not available for every single symbol out there, right? So some symbols have layers that can animate, other uh, symbols do not have these layers. So what you'll want to do is take a look at the SF Symbols app to kind of see which ones make sense 
you can preview uh, the animations as well, which is really nice. We can also set up a repeat behavior to become periodic. So for this, I would like to show you a slightly different um, SF symbol. So we'll actually include a different snippet here. Uh, it's not wiggle, that would be symbol three. Uh, symbol four, sorry about that. There we go. So now we're getting a periodic repeat. Um, and we also toggle whether or not this animation is active. So we're really doing two things here. So as you can see, this animation is now active and it's animating every two seconds. And so you can see that the bell kind of moves, that does nothing for two seconds and then it moves again. And that animation is now enabled because my notifications enable property is true. So if I flip that to be false right now, I just did that, you can't see it reflected in any other way other than the animation stops. So as you can see, SF symbols are a really nice way for you to provide a user feedback on what they're doing. We've already seen how we can use a um, variable color effect to create that sort of connecting animation that you had on the AirPods. And now we can also use the animation that we saw for the bell, where we wiggle the bell a little bit, but only periodically and only if a certain condition is true or false. That can be really useful when you want to draw the user's attention to something, for example, during an onboarding flow. So that's two examples already of how powerful SF symbols are. Let's see some other options that we have. So in addition to having this uh, wiggle animation going on that we have and to uh, wiggle if notifications are enabled or are not enabled, uh, we can make that quite easy with our SF symbols. Now let's move on to transitions where we can take one SF symbol and then move to another kind of symbol uh, when we want. So for that, we will copy in some other code so that you can see what that does. So I'll have this code right here. And now we have a different sort of look um, available to us where we have this toggle notifications and we have this image right here. So I can now click this button and we'll get a different symbol. Right, you can see that the transition is somewhat sudden. Uh, we kind of fade in the changes. It's not horrible, but it could look a little bit nicer, of course. Um, we can actually do that really easily by applying a content transition to our uh, image. So we can say content transition, and we could use dot place. Replacing is new in iOS 18. And let's see why the compiler is not happy about this. Uh, I need to use a symbol effect. My apologies, symbol effect dot replace. There we go. So now if I flip my notifications enabled Boolean, you can see that instead of doing this sudden animation, I am crossing out the notification bell. That is so much nicer than the animation that kind of faded over that we had before. We could even change the rendering mode um, for our SF symbol to make this look even better because currently everything is black uh, and we can change that. We can actually use a simple rendering mode and use something like hierarchical. So this will actually change the way that our slashed bell looks by making the bell itself look gray and then the cross line will be black. So I'll go ahead and toggle notifications and now you can see that we don't only cross out the bell, we also create out. So that looks so much nicer already. Now, I would highly recommend that you take a look at some of the other options that we have, because uh, we, we can also do things like bouncing or, um, oh, this one doesn't work, of course, for the transition. Uh, but there's, there's other things that we can do here, right? We can interpolate, which is the default behavior. Um, we can have our SF symbols do various things with our animations. Um, we can do things with color, which I'm not going to show you in this video, but we'll do that in another one. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of a sense of the different kinds of things that we can animate on our SF symbols. It's only an introduction, so I would highly recommend 
Did you take a look at all the options that I presented here so that you can get a sense of what they do and actually try them out for yourself? If you like this video and you're not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure to change that right now by clicking that subscribe button. Uh, make sure to like the video, enable notifications and all these things. Um, if you love Swift and you want to learn more about it, I have a website, DonnieWalls.com, where I publish articles regularly. Um, it's also what all these videos are based off of. So if you prefer a video, you'll just have to subscribe and you'll get the videos eventually. And if you want to learn more about Swift 6 and Swift Concurrency, I have workshops that I sell on my website. So you can go to DonnieWalls.com slash workshops to find those. You can go to PracticalSwiftConcurrency.com for a book that I wrote on Swift Concurrency. Um, it's... I think probably the most relevant thing in Swift right now. So if you love Swift, if you want to be a great Swift developer, you might want to check those out too. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Donnie Walls, and I will see you in the next one.